I don't know if we could find. But can we ever? Have, I don't think we could. could ever I mean, we could have. We could have yeah. found venues here. It would. It would have been a lot more expensive for sure. I think it would have been like fifteen to twenty percent more expensive, and it just wouldn't have been popping. Like it wouldn't have been like we literally took a hundred plus people yeah. out of people that and even that have was, passports. And that was my thing. Like people a lot that of my, never even yeah. own a passport. That's the best passport. part. That's the best yeah. part of yeah, it. My family never really left never traveled like that mm -hmm. so gave them a reason like they had to like go get a passport so to melissa's point like we had to force family members grown grown folks to like go get a passport so you come to my wedding you know what i'm saying yeah. and so mm -hmm. that was the dope part about it and so how did this dusty couple and yes i said dusty couple plan their destination wedding in negril jamaica that is what we are talking about today and i know that you're ready you're ready right yeah of course of course you are let's go uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, oh, no, no. hey desties and bride friends welcome back to the dusty guide to destination weddings I hope that you are having an amazing time planning those dusty weddings of yours. Today is about to get even better because I have our very first dusty couple interview. Let me say that again. Dusty couple interview and it's exactly what it sounds like. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the Austins. This is Dusty Bride Melissa and Dusty Groom Madi, and they planned their destination wedding at the magical Patu Castle in Negril, Jamaica. Now, if you're in the Dusty Lovers community, you know how much I've been talking about wanting to get a Dusty couple on here since forever. And I am so happy that we have one, really for two reasons. One, it delivered exactly what I thought it would, which is the perspectives of the Dusty Bride, which we've had the interviews, but also the Dusty Partner. And in this case, it's the Dusty Groom. And two, having a Dusty Couple will give a great example to help others know what they can expect so they can get excited about being on the show too. Two, two, two. So don't forget that details as well as a photo gallery of Melissa and Maddie's magical destination wedding are waiting for you in Dusty Land. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. And if you're listening to the podcast, no worries. You can always ask your questions in the Dusty Lovers community. Just make sure that you tag me so that I can see it. Or you can always just send me a DM on Instagram at Dusty.Land. And if you're brand new and have no idea what I'm talking about, first of all, welcome. There are plenty of episodes for you to get caught up on, but for now, Melissa and Maddie will show you what we are all about here on the Dusty Guide to Destination Weddings. So jump into the comments and give me that hashtag, I'm a Dusty, and let me know when and where you're getting married. I love to get to know my bride friends, and the more that I know, the more I can help you. And whether you are watching or listening, press pause and hit that subscribe button and also ding that bell on YouTube so that you know the moment a brand new episode comes live. Okay, now you get to enjoy my interview with the amazing and so beautiful Dusty couple, Melissa and Maddie, and I will see you soon. But until then, as usual, I am wishing you all the best week of your life and reminding you to have the time of your life planning the best days of your life. Bye, guys. Welcome, Madi and Melissa. How are you? What's hey. going on? <laughs> Thank you. It has been a long time coming. We are, it's been almost a year, but it's going to be so, I know it's worth the wait. It's great to have you guys on the show. Um, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Good, yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, Good. thank you so much glad for having us and yeah. waiting. <laughs> of course. Are y'all ready to kind of dig in and go down memory lane? Yeah. I think so. Let's do it. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, we're coming up on two years. Two years and, yeah. So let's see how much we remember. <laughs> I know. That's crazy. Now, what's your actual wedding date? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
919. <laughs> what is it? 91919. So September 19th, 2019. Yeah. So we'll oh. never forget it. Yeah, it's possible to forget. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, so I will have already done your intro, but can you guys introduce yourself, your names, where you got married, and why you chose your destination? Oh, ladies Oh, first. whoever, yes. <laughs> so I'm Melissa Llewellyn Alston, and... I am Marty Alston, her husband, her soulmate. <laughs> Everything. Her, <laughs> oh, her everything. Her well, leading I men. Know. Her leading men. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> we got married at Patu Castle in Negril, Jamaica. Yeah, you did. What made you guys choose Patu? So funny. Funny thing is, it was not our first choice. Uh, well, Jamaica. Jamaica was our first choice yeah. for sure. And I think during April of 2018, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I want to say, I can't remember the years right now, but I know it was April because we went for Carnival. Um, that was 2018, so we went for Carnival. And during that trip was our first, like, uh, venue, you know, I don't know. Like scouting. a viewing, a scouting <laughs> trip, kind of. <laughs> You're right. So we went to, oh gosh, we went everywhere. We didn't look at anywhere in Kingston. We went to Portland and we looked at Trident. Trident. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and then we <laughs> we went to this place called the Ruins. Okay. <laughs> remember that? Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it wasn't an. It was a real ruin. Like it was a legit ruin. And it wasn't a ruin that like as most brides would know. It's like this rundown ruin that It wasn't safe. That no it's that safe. nobody it wasn't safe. gets married at. And I had this idea that I could transform this ruin and make it a venue. Let me intervene, I'm sorry. So <laughs> Melissa <laughs> couple of things. Melissa is in production. That's her career. So, like, the be the best quality in this situation is she's a visionary. So she had this vision of like this thing, and and when she starts saying stuff like, "Well, we could build this and we could build that," I'm like, "Oh, okay, here we go." And so the idea was there, but it was like it was like an abandoned kind of room. It was really nice if you like had to clean it up, but then I'm like, we got people coming here. You know, we got to be mindful. I don't want to rock to fall on nobody and kill them. So it was just a lot yeah, of stuff like that. It, it was like, it was an old fort out in Portland. I found it by just like Googling like photos. So people go there to take like photos, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but yeah, like <laughs> somebody could have legit been having dinner and part of the building probably <laughs> falls on their head. <laughs> so... I really, but I fell in love with like that look because I had this reference picture. Like I'm like the queen of references. So I had this reference picture. I don't know where this was, maybe somewhere like in Italy or something like that. So our wedding planner at the time, let me say that, our wedding planner at the time, she was like, okay, well since let's go to, you know, Negril. Like she was kind of like connected in Negril and she was like, I have, this place called, if you like the ruins, I have this place for you called Patu Castle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she called Patu. We didn't even know it was a castle, I don't think at first. Like it's, you know, it has a ruined look. It is a small, it's a small yeah. castle. It doesn't fit a lot of people. And we already had 180 on our guest list when we, when we first started building the list. She says, I know for sure it only holds 120. So you would have to like cut your list. And I was like, okay, well let's look at it because it checked off the box that Negril is my absolute favorite place in Jamaica. Okay. That's what it says. I just love it for like relaxation. And if she's telling me it's a ruin and a castle, then check, all those check. two things that we just looked at <laughs> that were just right. one Trident was just like wait. It wasn't so much about the expense. I just didn't um I didn't really like the way that like the coordinator was like dealing with us. And it's like I'm not paying you guys all this money and like And I don't like your attitude. Yeah. <laughs> The commute also and the commute. For, for friends and family to fly in to get to Trident, it was like a 
well, not so much to commute, but there's nothing else to do. Yeah, there. yeah that's, that's what it was. They don't, they don't have any like all inclusive hotels in Portland. Like, there's yeah. nothing to do. And our friends and family, like, they like to party, you know. So it's like we're not gonna bring all these people down to Jamaica, and, and because we got married on a Thursday, so people can kind of make a vacation out of it, and they right. can spend to yeah. their weekend doing, you know, tours or just hanging out. But Portland didn't lend itself to that. So we went to Negril. I'm not 100% sure if we went in that same trip. To Pat? No. We Remember, didn't. You, you, it wasn't open. So it wasn't, you yes. Went back. You went yes. back. Check it out. We could, yeah. Either it wasn't open or we didn't have time. I don't, I don't remember. But I know that I, I flew back, I think, by myself. So, right, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah. and uh, my one of my best friends, Trisha, she came with me, and it's like it's a hidden gem. Like when like when you drive up, and I mean, and they pull back those gates, it's like you would yeah. never know that the yeah. castle is behind there. What we did do was look at it on pictures, and even the pictures don't do it justice. Mm. You know, like really, really, really a beautiful location that um our wedding planner. Um, it was her, it, like, I can't take the credit for it. It definitely was her suggestion. Uh, she had done a bride there, or no, she was doing a bride uh, the following year, like, earlier that year, in February 2019, and that bride was the one that found it, because apparently, like, it's on, like, social sites, like, Airbnb. Yeah, and, I ended up looking that up. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Lot, it's on a lot of things that, uh, you know, like, other brides find, not exactly like why you're doing this, but not people of, of our color, like other brides, like I think she was like an Indian bride that had found the location. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was, a, it was a huge, huge score for us, like finding that venue. And the price is very, well at the time was very reasonable. I don't know what it's gonna do. I mean, the guy is super sweet too though. So he doesn't yeah, also try people. and break the bank, I think, people. but who knows, you know, what, how, what will happen in the future, but it definitely was, one of the most reasonable like venues which was you know a, a huge sell for us which was which allowed us to have like other you know whistles and bells at the at the venue yeah so cost effective yeah oh i have so many questions okay first i i took notes because i had to do that where are you guys where do you guys live philadelphia so we live in philadelphia okay are you from philly no. <laughs> Where are you we're from? from we're from Connecticut. Okay. Okay. And and I have actually have a that that's a separate thing too because I got a whole other thing. I got notes. Here. This is you guys are so interesting and I've done a little homework on y'all. So <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of things to look at in this past year. So okay. Um. So you. So Patsu, because it's an Airbnb, did you guys stay there? Like, did guests stay there as well? How did you guys do that? So I I stayed there. Um, I I stayed there. My hairstylist stayed there. Who else? The Trisha. So I think one of the brides. Some of the bridesmaids stayed there. Too. No, no, yeah. they all ended up. Because initially, yeah, initially I was like gonna do like all you know um, the bride like the wedding the bridal party I should say that because I like, stayed there the night before mm -hmm. but then I decided that I wanted to be like by myself but by that time I was just so drained and it was just so much going on um they since we had the wedding on a Thursday and they didn't have guests checking in on Friday he let us check out on the Friday because they have like a rule like you it's like a three or four night minimum or something like that okay um, which worked out because on the Tuesday, so the Tuesday I called, like, we loaded in. So um, myself and all the things that I brought down there, which I, we'll talk about yes, later. Yes, yes. We got everything there. We loaded all. We got to talk about that. We loaded That's, all of we that. We loaded that. all that stuff in yeah. on, like, a Tuesday. Yeah. Then the vendors showed up on Wednesday to, like, erect tents and all that stuff. We got married on a Thursday. And then Friday was the the cleanup, the pull down. So that's how we got our our four days in. And and because no one else wanted to book the venue, or we were still able to check out, and he was still able to get a rental out of the weekend, he didn't make us have to like buy out the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. But I I do think that he does that sometimes, like depending on like if it's like a high season or mm. or what happens, because he doesn't want to miss out on any rentals. So um, you just pay like you know the per night rate. 
And then there's a small, like, event fee is how he does, like, the night when you have, you know, the the wedding, there's a, a small event fee. So Do you remember, like, around about how much it was? I know it's been a little minute, but. Yeah, I, well, I don't. Go ahead. I, don't want I think to it was place. all in eight thousand dollars. I was gonna say seven seventy five, but it might be eight. It was. Yeah. It was eight, like eight. No, it was less than that because two thousand of that was a deposit. So I want to say, say like yeah, it was ish. like six ish. Wow. It That's was so, but two thousand of that was the venue fee. Okay. And I think it was like a thousand dollars. That's what it was. It was something like a thousand dollars a night to book everything out, or like twelve hundred a night. That's what it was. It was twelve hundred a night. So that was a Tuesday night. Wednesday night, Thursday night. So that's how we got to our 36, right? A 48. Or no, a 48. And then, and then and we then paid the, the extra. 68. So it was like Yeah, it was, it was like, it was 68. Okay. And did you have to, you had to bring in all your vendors though, right? As far as yeah, food you and. To, yeah, you have to bring in all your vendors. Like they don't have anything there. It's just a space, which it was exciting for me. Um, that was, a, the, oh, that was a challenge with Trident. It was like. You had to use all of their vendors. Yeah. Like mm. you had to use your chef, it you had budget. to use, and they would not budge on that. And I, when I looked at the photos of like the food, I was like, well, this doesn't even look good. Like I, and and on top of, you know what? They would have allowed you to bring in outside vendors, but the the outside vendor fee was like double the rental yeah. cost. And I'm like, guys, this is, this is not even like making sense or adding oh. up. Yeah. Like and. Yeah. They're going to force you to do it because it doesn't make sense. So they're just going to make you do it. Yeah. Maybe other people don't care. Like they really weren't trying to negotiate and play ball. And that venue is not cheap. Like it's not a cheap venue at all. It's nice. And like, it's nice. it's nice. I mean, we were going to book out, try it at like the hotel for our guests and do that whole thing. And I'm a numbers person also at the end of the day. So when I did the math, I was like, they're still making a nice chunk of change. Like they, so what I think what I asked her is, okay, can you waive? the vendor fee. It was like ten thousand dollars, something like that. And she was like, No. Yeah, and I was like, was you know what? Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. And that yeah. was and that was just to bring in know. our own chef. Like it was yeah. to bring in our own chef or something. Cause the chef that wow. I was like, this food does not even like look great. Like I'm not So yeah, that's what it was. So what was appealing to me about Pat too is literally just a space. It's a blank yeah. canvas. Yeah. And you can just do whatever you want with it. I mean, we took all our photos there. Like we didn't have to go off site to take photos. We did everything there. there. That's awesome. Yeah, it really is a versatile space. That's so cool, yeah. Um, That's, yeah, so shout out to your planner. Shout out your planner out, who's your planner? Well. (laughs) Okay, you said at the time. Okay, wait a minute, do we want to shoot? Hold on now, okay. You gotta gotta be clear. (laughs) You did say at the time. the, okay, so key. no, we did start with a planner, and I mean, her name is, oh, I know and her. yeah, I'm sure you've probably heard of her, I think mm-hmm. she has something called, maybe Destination something is her name, I don't know if something. she's still planning anymore, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing, but in any case, um, how we ended up going with her there's a crazy story. We won a competition oh, that she was doing. So, you right. know, she's a Munaluchi, uh, what did they, they call them? Coterie like, so, member. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. she was doing like a contest kind of thing. And we submitted and we ended up winning. And, but what it was is that you still had to pay your, you had to pay your own way to Jamaica, but then it would be like an all expensive paid weekend of dining and food with two couples so it was us and another couple and she used it um to take images to build up you know kind of like her portfolio and her presence in jamaica because she was positioning herself as this destination wedding planner (laughs) okay in jamaica Jamaica. so what attracted me was the the whole munaluchi thing right right uh, it was a red flag for our first meeting, and I really should have listened to my best friend because she was late to like our first initial meeting. So after we went to the grill, did the whole thing, and we decided that we were going to bring her on, her fee was it was small, like to you know hire her. But because I even questioned, I was like, well, are you going to be there, you know, step by step? Because I'm also super hands on, and I there's yes. certain things that I don't need you to do, but I definitely need you to you know be there. Be there. To, like, 
call people and be on the ground be on the ground be that person on the ground Mm -hmm. so she was late to our first meeting which was a huge red flag because she didn't have like a car or a taxi or some drama was going on and so my my best friend or my maid of honor we're sitting at the terra nova like okay so she comes in there like all flustered and my best friend looks at me and she said you need to get rid of this lady because she is not going to be able to move at your speed this was Mm. 18 months before our wedding Okay. So I was like, no, you know, like she's just really trying to, you know, transition and like kind of, you know, build a presence here. I think it'll be fine. So time went on. Um, she had a chef, uh, a chef that she worked with, created a whole PDF presentation for us that looked great. I sent her all my ideas. Like I sent her my whole PDF yeah, thing. I that. And um, she came back with uh, a menu price, which was very, very reasonable. Uh, but then something happened. She went MIA. The the chef we met went, with that chef. Because we, we met there. with that chef. We, yeah. We had when we were doing location, we had, we we location scout, and we also did a tasting. Um, we met with the chef, and I don't somewhere somehow because now my memory is kind of I don't know somehow somehow the chef went MIA. Then she came back and said, oh, that our uh, Kathy would no longer be available to do our wedding. Here are some other options. I knew of the other options. But it's, they just weren't options that I wanted. So then I went and started to, you know, find my own chef. Right. So back stories, that, I don't know if you know, but I used to also live in Jamaica. So No, I, that was going to ask why Jamaica yeah. also. So oh, this is going to oh, help. Yeah. So, share, yeah. So sorry. So I lived in Jamaica <laughs> for seven years doing production. So I know all the vendors. And so I know these things are very easy to find, but if we hired a planner, like, I don't want to be doing those things. I want to just tell you what I want and you need to just make it happen. Yeah. So, yeah. So then something happened with the chef and then I ended up, that's how I ended up finding Alex the Great, who, I mean, he's amazing. He actually just did the wedding of the makeup artist who did our, who did my makeup. He just oh. did it. He just catered her, her wedding um, he as well, but job. he did a phenomenal, phenomenal. job. Yeah like phenomenal um, job. So yeah, then I had to find the caterer. And it also at the time could have been my ignorance not knowing what a wedding planner's job is. Because then when it came to the decor, like I told her that I'm gonna buy like everything and we're gonna ship it down there. I just want to make sure that you <laughs> Marty's have face. Somebody, like I'm sorry. <laughs> you have I forgot someone, you to me. I'm sorry. That you have oh, someone God. to like, you know, set it up like on the day because at our meeting 12 months ago she told me like yeah she had all these people so now we're coming down to it I'm like okay well where's your team like who I'm not coming to spread tablecloths like I'm not putting up like I'll stay at the night before but where is the team and she then she was like oh well it's just her and like a coordinator I said so both of you guys are gonna put all this together right right and I'm like, so where is the manpower coming from? She's like, oh, no, but you said you had people. I said, no, I did not. <laughs> I, I said that, you know, I do have these resources, but you assured me that you had guys there right. that you had it taken care of. Was not the case. So when it came down to it, I had to end up, like, finding truck drivers to get our stuff from Kingston to Negril. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We wanted yeah. to do like this authentic, yes. like roadside meals. This was the last straw for me. Like this is like on the day. Like now. the jerk chicken that you could go yeah. and find and say, "Ooh, yeah, with the yeah." Right. Mm. And then so I call her and I'm like, "Okay, uh, like Ophelia, well, where are we with this?" She's like, "Oh, I couldn't find it." What? The, what do you mean you can't find? Like we are in Jamaica. Like these people are on the side of the road. Like you literally walk up to a person on the street. Hey. Yeah, you know, <laughs> which I did the day before my wedding. Yeah, it's fair. <gasps> So that I was spent and yeah. then something was happening and I don't remember what it was, but this was like, I, I was like, I'm done because she said, I don't know who she called or what the conversation was, but I, I remember what came out of her mouth. She said, Melissa's problem is she doesn't like to be told no. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. She and, said that to... She said that she said that to somebody, she said that to and it somebody. got back to you. Yeah. yeah. Or she said it to me on the phone. At this point, I can't remember. I remember. She must have said it to me on the phone. This was two days before my wedding. Oh. And I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. I said I didn't get this. Not even my wedding. I didn't get this far in life 
by accepting no. And these things that I'm asking mm. for are not hard. No. These are not hard things. These are basic things. We had 18 months, not eight, not four, 18 months. And this is basic. Like I hand fed you everything, but you're not connected on the ground. You know what it was? The Lucite chairs. Oh, I love those. So the last thing is that I called her. I said, hey, you know, Philly, have you found the Lucite chairs? She's like, oh, they're not available in Jamaica. This time, I already know where the chairs are. Yeah, that's what it was. I was just fucking with her to see. Like, I already knew. I she was like, oh, they're yeah. not in Jamaica. I said, what? Yeah. I said, okay. I said, well, yeah. MC Decor just did an event for our NCB Bank, and they have 220 Lucite chairs. This is the number. Call her. Yeah, I got to give you. Okay, yeah. You know, so um, it, yeah, it was like that, that it was just like, oh, it was so bad. So two days. So so we did my like girls weekend or bachelorette weekend. And my same best friend, she's like, look, you need to call Kara. She's like, you know what? Yeah. I'm not dealing with this. I'm calling Kara right now. And I don't care what it costs. She said, because one thing I cannot deal with is you crying on your, on wedding. your wedding day. So, she, so, so shout yeah, out to Kamala. Kamala. She called Kamala Kara. Too, so shout plan. out to Kara from Petals she and was, Promises. All right now. All right, Petals and she Promises. She was amazing. amazing. And any bride that is getting married in Jamaica, they need to call She had, She had my guys. I had nine, nine Neanderthal knucklehead guys, <laughs> and she got us all right. I'm telling so you, like, she it is was, a phenomenal. Yeah, it she was, was really good. Yeah, it was Four days before, because I told her what happened. I was like, okay, I don't want to, like, you know, really fire this lady. This is before I fired her. I said, so maybe you guys could work together. And you know, an email, too, that she was firing her. You copied me in on it. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, I was on fire. Like, so, you know, we went to Kara's office. We brought all our th things in. I showed her the tablescape. Um, I was like, look, I trust you. I don't even need to see a mock-up right now. So how many days? Where are we? And what's the I'm countdown? Her, I'm all over the place, but this is this is five days before the wedding. Oh, Lord. I'm okay. I'm still having her work yeah. with me. I'm like, look, yeah. she was yeah. the original planner. She still has some contacts. Maybe you guys can work together, but she cannot handle this on her own. Mm -hmm. Like, I need you to kind of take this over. And Kamala was on that initiated phone call. She paid her what she was asking, and she just took everything mm -hmm. by yeah. the reins. And so that was five days before the wedding. But then two days before the wedding, that's when the thing happened with, um, and I saw her, I was like, just don't come. And I told Car, I said, Car, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to be the on-the-day coordinator as well. Because that's what it was. She was only going to do, like, the setting up and the decor, mm -hmm. and I was still going to keep her as the on-the-day person but then I was like no I said she cannot I don't want to see her I was furious my mom was furious like everybody's furious I called the Munaguchi <laughs> lady the night before I'm telling her I was like this, this is, is all the, facts. this is the night before like I called yeah. her I emailed them I said like you like really like the Munaguchi Jackie like yes yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes she did you know her you know I was like, yo, I said, you guys, I might, I might find that email. I said, I don't know what you have to be to be this Munaluchi, whatever, Country. or what yeah. type of vetting process, yeah. but you guys really need to lie. I said, I just had one of your people tell me that my problem is that I don't like to be told no. What bride likes to be told that? <laughs> like, what bride? And again, and I could see that if I was asking for things that was like out of this world, right? I was asking for I want things. an elephant in the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I said. I, I said you're acting like I'm enough. acting like I want a helicopter to come <laughs> from. Like this is basic, basic things, stuff. like yeah. basic things. Yeah. And so yeah, the night before, I called the Jack. I emailed her and I was like, look. Y'all need to, this lady does not need to be positioning herself <laughs> as anybody's destination, anything. This is horrible. It's been a horrible experience. A way I paid her is a waste of money. She like it paid. was just, no, she, she got, got paid. paid. Yeah, she got paid. Yeah. And I was like, do not come. But she did show up. And she did show up because she's smart, because contractually, she would have had, had to her, her contract. If not, then, you know, I would have had like recourse. So that's where I get the, you know, was when planned, like I 
honestly, I've gotten her like out of my system. I was still mad like a whole year. After. I about to say, I think we bringing it back now. Hold on, we go. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was the it was the worst experience. It was the worst experience ever. It was really, really bad. Like really, really bad. She's a fraud. Like that's not like she's she's a legit fraud. Or maybe she, and then you know what? Maybe she's good for other people. Like maybe she's good for other brides that don't know anything or. What I said, I, she's not the good for the DIY bride. Like she's yeah. not that for like yeah, she's Yeah, I think cookie cutter. Yeah, if you want basic. a cookie cutter basic, you're not yeah. gonna complain. You know and you just want her to do whatever she thinks. Work. No, oh. so then that's again, so that's my ignorance, but then not because Kara was everything that I thought a wedding planner should be. But when we go back to even the Munalushi thing, she had nothing but she brings all the people together, right? And showcases mm. their and talent. And then showcases their talent, and it's like, oh, I'm the wedding yeah. planner. But in my mind, that's not a wedding She's planner, but maybe together. it is. So when I huh? when I so when I match it to what I do in production, right? I bring the cameraman. I I bring all the people together to make the vision happen of a director. So maybe I went into the situation kind of ignorant and not knowing really what a wedding planner's job is and maybe it is only to pull all the vendors together no. and not do the things that I and thought manage. and manage, manage yeah. but manage. Kara but, but but again I think it is also is she's not but she said it though she said it when we were at the moon she's like oh I'm not a creative person at all like I don't have that kind of vision well what are you doing then you, you're not that's not you're, you're in the wrong profession at this point then exactly. that's not you can't call yourself that but you guys it's funny and we're Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to take a quick moment to tell you about the amazing wedding website and app company that I used and I personally, personally love, and that's Appy Couple. Appy Couple is a modern wedding website and interactive app that practically builds itself. And let's be honest, Desti weddings require way more details and care than the traditional wedding. And I really feel strongly that Appy Couple is a perfect choice if you want to invite and impress. Happy Couple lets you organize all aspects of your wedding from individual event details and RSVPs to registries and every last detail your guests will need. Travel accommodations, passports, maps, weather, everything. And let's be honest, it's fun telling people that your wedding has an app. Huh? What's your question? <laughs> Go to the app and find out. Now, I not only used Appy Couple for my wedding, but Appy Couple since the beginning has been a Desti partner, which means that should you use my link, I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. If you would like to know more about Appy Couple, get my review, get some pros and cons, and see what goodies they have to offer right now, you can go to desti.land slash Couple. The link will be in the description. And I also did a complete walkthrough of my wedding website for you to get a feel for how Appy Couple works. So you can head there and sign up and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, back to the interview. But no, again, I, I think it works for some work. people, but I told her wanted. that she could not use any of my stuff like arms. She could not. We wanted yeah. coconuts. Oh, that's the coconut. The, the coconut. That, the coconut. That, that's coconut when I was man. like, she gotta go. <laughs> the coconut. Because we wanted to find. Um, Mel had this vision of getting coconuts and having them stamped with. I might oh. The, the thing, but the but the Melissa and Marty nine one nine one nine thing on every. Coconut, so when our guests get off the bus, they can have a fresh coconut. Just a nice touch. Oh, tuck. yeah. I didn't do the coconuts, I think. Yeah, right. she had, so she had the one girl. In Jamaica. In Jamaica. She had the one girl. Apparently, what had happened was there was a company that used to do it, but the girls split. So she she only had the contact for one, one of the One places. And she don't and know how to take some initiative and find somebody so else. Called, yeah, so one of my friends, my homeboy, he does, they do parties. And I was like, look. The coconut thing y'all had at the party, can, do you have the girl's number? He's like, oh, yeah, that's Georgina. Call her. So, literally, it was like a WhatsApp. It was the easy, like, just ask the question. Just yeah. ask. And so, I'm sitting there thinking, like, you're supposed to be a wedding planner. We have Instagram. You can hashtag. You can look for whatever. Like, you, like her response to come back to me was like, oh, she couldn't find a coconut girl. I'm like, huh? Yeah, that sounds like a yeah. person. She couldn't find a yeah. cigar person. The cigar like, yeah, so she just didn't do want to do anything yeah, is, the, is the reality. Oh, this is another thing that happened. <laughs> oh, she was planning her birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Forgot about At the, the same time? Week- yes. The weekend before the wedding, she wasn't going to be available because she was planning her 45th birthday and party. And she didn't tell us. 
right before like she might have mentioned it she right might have mentioned like, it but then but in passing not like it's an actual right and yeah. then i just see on instagram she took our marble our marble so my i had this whole marble idea like marble charge mark she took that for her wedding and <laughs> i'm like so that whole marble theme because at the time the marble theme thing wasn't even like a thing yeah september 2019 and she had as her wedding invites this big weekend she had her girlfriends come down the this was the saturday but our wedding was a thursday this would have been the saturday before our wedding she's planning like this big extravagant birthday party for herself like it was just so much it was just like so much it was so much <laughs> This is uh this is amazing. So yes, this is this is good. Yeah, I mean yeah, I I'll I'll chop what I need to do. And I'm actually probably gonna yeah. just blur her name and then just let it we'll we'll let it still talk, but I'm not gonna I don't I don't need her coming at me for nothing. Which oh, is nothing man. wrong with it, but somebody may no, end no, up. No, no, this is, and again, no. this is like this is just my experience. No, like, and I'm it's not, real. No, but yeah, it's a to, story that needs to be told to, for sure because yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would just say, like, any bride, like, especially if you're, like, super hands-on, just be clear and just do your research with whoever your planner is going to be. Because apparently there's different types of planners or, yeah. or coordinator. Like, I don't know. Like, you just yeah, just ask. There's certain questions you need to ask. And really, it's like, who is your team? And if they glaze over, or like, oh, well, no, I have a team. Like, no, who is your team? Yeah, how like, many? Yeah. There, how many? Who's your manpower? Who's going to be putting out yeah, chairs? Sure. Because Kara had a team of three. And they it was her. Fire. And she they call, she calls them her pixies. And it was two of the young ladies. And they all put out chairs. They put out the programs. Like, they were rocking. Like, she had some guys for, like, manpower or whatever that she found. But, I mean, it was three, three, no, three they ladies. They coordinated, the, they coordinated the, the wedding parties. Yeah. They coordinated everything. Every, no, everything. And it was three of them. Yeah, it was three of them. Yep. I, yeah. I absolutely. But, yes, you guys are right. Like, I also do, like, coaching since I, well, in my community. And one of the things I always say is you have to, one, meet the people. Of course, you guys did meet her. But also... I'm a stickler for references. Like I don't even allow professionals on my show that I haven't vetted for the same reason as you found them through another medium and then it didn't, you know, work out. I don't need that. Not that it's going to be a hundred percent perfect, but I need to hear from brides. I need to hear from colleagues. Cause it's just important to make sure that you're, these are really the people who they say they are. Cause it's easy. A photo doesn't really give you much. So you yeah, are yeah. a perfect story to, um, yeah, and that's it that. for me. And that's what I, cause I already said that to you. Like I didn't check her references. No, mm-hmm. I took for granted it was the that Mono she Lucci was thing. this monologue. This and, 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 and all the people she had with her were like really dope. We're people. really good. Right. All, all, all black. Everybody yeah. Was, and that's what you want. Yeah. You know, so it was like, I like the vibe. I like the energy, not knowing that she just, not record, knowing that she everybody just together. found them and you just brought I mean? them together yeah. to, right. to showcase and um, whatever issue was coming out that season or whatever, like it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because we was on what's his name's thing. Um, yeah, Milton. Milton. We, did we was the, on Milton's he had a thing series, too. Though. He had a series. Why did Why did I get married or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this this show. Not the one that's on TLC. It's like another oh. small one. Um, it's like not called Why Did I Get Married. Marry Me. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's called Marry Me. So it, it's kind of similar to I like kind of not really what you're doing, but. It was. Uh, it's like telling it's a from story. the male's perspective, though. Yeah. The moment that you that you knew. So, um, oh, okay. what he does? No, it's really cool. You should look it up. So, what he does is that he does interviews separately. So he'll ask, you know, the the bride or the wife, you know, questions and what is called the defining moment. Um, and this is asking why you got engaged, though. We wasn't married yet. Oh yeah, we weren't married. But yeah. this is like, what? Yeah, why did you? What why was the defining could, moment? Yeah. And then he asks the bride, you know, what she thinks the moment was. And then he asks the groom what he what the what actual the was. Moment. Right. And so when they come together, you talk about your stories, and then the bride gives her her moment, which I think nine out of ten brides have it wrong. They do. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, I don't know. Nine that. out of ten brides have it the wrong. The brides about don't know what anything. that. Right. Yeah, the, You're like, I wasn't looking perfect and beautiful perfect. and all of the right. things. It wasn't the time when I came out with my best, best. No, it wasn't that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. So you have to send me that. Or, um, yeah, send me yeah, that. I'll, I'll, I'll get that because I have to see that. I would love yeah, to. Yeah, you should, you should check it out. He's not doing it anymore, which is 
kind of sad. I mean, I guess he was trying to find a platform because he was doing it all out of pocket. Yeah. Okay. But um, I thought it was it was it was, it was really a great concept. it was a great concept, like a really really great concept. Yeah, he's not doing it anymore. No, he should though. It's, it it was a really good concept. Okay. Yeah. Um. I know. Do you guys watch Black Love? Yes. So oh. it was. It's kind of like that, but yeah. he did it before Black Love. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's it, it is similar to that to that platform. Okay, yeah, I mean, we we watch that. It's always it's definitely a conversation starter. So yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we pause all the time. Like pause now. What you think? Did you hear that? What you, what you, what you think about that? Wait a minute. Do you do you feel like that's it? You know. So so good. I'm glad though. It's, it's nice to share the stories, and you guys are hilarious. So and speaking of television, you guys were on a TV show. Yeah. You guys, and the, and it sound and it, well, you made me think about it when you were talking about the ruin and how you were a visionary. So can you tell people like, do you guys is is it flipping houses? It's flipping houses, right? Beach flip. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> one of the many things you guys do. One of, one, one, of of, one of the many things. I mean, since the pandemic and like we kind of after we got married, we kind of like took a break, um, just for a plethora of reasons, like the market, just financial stuff. But during that time. Um, <laughs> so we were those couples, you know, that sit at home and watch HGTV or watch all these fixer upper shows. So at the time, what was it that we were watching? Let me, hold on. Let me let him. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so I am more, my personality is more of like cautious. I do, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to figure it out. I need to know everything about it. Melissa's completely opposite. That's she's my husband, jump, and that's me. Right yeah. then and there. She doesn't even care. She's just <laughs> going to do it. So that's how we got to go ahead now. So we're at home. Or I was visiting for the weekend because we weren't living together. I was still living in LA. So we were doing a long distance relationship. So I was in Philly for the weekend. We're watching um, Flipping the Block. And I would look at him. I said, I wonder how we would be if we were. No, it wasn't flipping the block. It was uh, Weekend Warriors. Weekend Warriors. Weekend Warriors. It was Weekend mm-hmm. Warriors. And it was a husband and wife. And they were trying to do some projects. And I looked at him. And I said, I wonder how we would be if we were on one of those shows. And, and side note, at the time, I had a niche where I would get like old furniture. I would find old furniture on the street. I would just repurpose it, redo it, and I'd just leave it somewhere. And oh. she design eyes so she would like design stuff or just decorate stuff interior decorate so that's when she was kind of looking like i wonder if we could do something like that and i was like i don't know maybe we could <laughs> so then, i immediately went online <laughs> to see what was casting and hgtv was casting for flipping the block flipping the block yeah. and flipping the block we used to watch that show as well it's like when you get like it's four four teams um that are in pairs and you have to renovate a section of the house room by room, but you actually live in the house that you're renovating. Mm. So I was like, oh, I was like, so I signed up, said, I answered all the questions. It was like a she whole, did. oh my, it was like 20 pages of questions. She did. The producers called us back the next day. <laughs> yeah. And they called us back the next day. They were like, oh my gosh, you know, the supervisor producer loves you guys. We want to, you know, talk more. Which when we were setting up for this, I said, what does this remind you of? Yeah, when we because, sat down like this, I was like... Because we had to do a... Did set. you? Last time we were on Skype. Was, yeah, was, yeah. Was, was when we were doing an interview for, um, for Flipping the Block. So we went through a whole host of interviews. It was like crazy. And then they called us back and they were like, well, you know, we're not going to do that show, but we're going to do another show. We want to see if you guys are still interested. We can't tell you the name right now. It'll kind of be the same premise, but it just won't be flipping the block. We were like, yeah, you know, fine, whatever. They're like, okay, we just have one more round of interviews. So we went on. I was somewhere at work. I think I was in Long Beach working Mm -hmm. and you were here, here working. So we did one more Skype. And the next day I was on set and then they called and were like, well, you're on the show. I was I, like, wait, what? I said they wasn't going to call it. Yeah, he thought they weren't going to call. Like, they ain't going to call. They ain't going right. to call. They were so dry. Like, the last interview, like, we couldn't was, gauge, yeah, like, was what was what was really happening. And then, so I was like, wait, are you going to call Marty? They're like, no, you can call him. So I called him. I was like, lover. He was like, oh. you lover then? Yeah. yeah, I did. I was like, lover. We got on the show. He was like, what? I was like, yes. And I was like, what are you going to do? Because I'm freelance. I work for myself. And he was working for the Boy Scouts at the time. He was like, well, I'm not. I just got to go talk to my job. Because we had to leave. We were gone for, what, 13 weeks? We were gone for like 
Two or three months, I think. Yeah. It was like two or three it months. It was a long, it was a really long, like, it was like three months. Three months. It was, it was like three months. months. Wow. That we were gone for on the show. So, yeah, that was, I tell you, the hardest thing Awful. I've ever done. Really? So yeah. It looks so much more glamorous when we're watching you. Yes, and and, and and I will tell you that was very strategic on the producers' part because they did tell they did tell when we even I watched it, I was surprised, and they did something like you know we could have made you look so bad, but that's not the network for this. Like maybe if this was like Bravo, Bradzilla yeah, yeah. or something, yeah. y'all would have. Yeah. They were like Bravo, if this was Bravo or, yeah, or something, I would have for really... sure been like the angry black woman yeah, on the sure. show. Like it was so. She was cussing everybody. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. Oh, Him yeah. and I were fighting all the time, but Everything. it was strategic because remember we had never lived together. Aside from being together for weekends when I come to visit, we never had to live in the same space for longer mm. than four days. Oh, so wow. now you put two people in the same room, in the same room, no TV, no, no phone, TV, no phone, to and y'all gotta work together I'm on something that y'all together. haven't done before. Yeah. Yeah, it was, oh my gosh, it was awful. It was awful. And that's the only reason why we're together now. Yes, and I, I do oh, I do attribute that reason. show. Like, well, after we got through that, I was like, if we get through that, we can get through anything. Like, yeah. it was terrible. It was bad. The overall experience was fun. We got lifetime friends. We have lifetime sure. friends with the other contestants. But Aww. it was really, really yeah, hard. It like, it, it was really hard. Interesting. Well, that's yeah, a good they, warning for me. Yeah, all of all, yeah, all of them from the came TV to the show wedding came and everything. To the wedding. Yeah. Oh wow, that's good nice. Friend. Good friends. We're good friends, all yeah. of us. Yeah. So speaking, of, okay, so back to the wedding and your guest list. You you mentioned that you had a hundred and eighty guests initially. Like so let's. Right. Well, it's like three. Yeah, three. So you know when you start like the initial, you know, three hundred. Yeah, what was your process with that? How did you guys work out? The initial guest list. <laughs> well, we started. Up so much old stuff. We started with the bridal, with the wedding party. Let's start there. So I, I don't have any friends. That's why I says I don't have any friends. He is in a fraternity. He has all the friends. Shout out your fraternity. Thank you, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, <laughs> 1911. Shout out to the noobs. Here we go. Get that on the table. So, that will absolutely be there. Yeah. So, he has all the friends, all the network. So he starts building out his groom team. And I'm like, I only have like four, three or four. And he has like 12. And I'm like, look, like we can't do 10. this. All right, 10, 10, 12. He had a lot. And then so I had to start to look into like my friend. Like there's, these women are still my friends. And I'm so glad like they were a part of my day. But it was hard because... It's like now it's like, okay, you know people for so long and then you have people that you only know a little bit of time but they mean so much to you, which I just want it to be easy. I just wanted to have like my two best friends and call it a day, but we, but he wanted all his guys there. He wanted his line brothers there, then his frat brothers, then he has a brother. So the line, then he has best friends. Like it was just, it's <laughs> got insane, but we did it. I we, love my people. We had, I think 22 total, 22. Yeah, 11, yeah 10 and 11. And then his daughter, Maya, his son. Yeah, we had, I think it was like a total of 22 by the time we were done. So that's how we started. We was like, okay, let's get the bridal party, uh, sorry, the wedding party out the way. And then now let's build the guest list. Interesting. I like it. Okay. Yeah. So he started doing his list and I did my list. And then I made a spreadsheet. Of course. Yeah. The I, love, I love the spreadsheets. The spreadsheet that I don't even think to this day you went and inputted your people. No, he did. Like finally, I still got the spreadsheet. I <laughs> so, still have it. You're right, I made For a my spreadsheet. My pain and suffering. I still and have we, it. And we inputted, <laughs> and we looked at the list. We cross checked and we said, "Look, we're gonna do this. We know it's a destination wedding, and we already know that half of these people are not gonna come because they're not gonna have passports. They're not gonna be able to afford it. Which, but they they still wanted an invite. But they still would want an invite because you know our family. You know how our, our people are like. You don't invite them to your but like you, send me an you, you, you will never friend. hear that. And yeah, we'll like, never hear the end. I, we did we didn't do that, and there's plenty of people like we weren't gonna come anyway. We'll still okay. Well, okay. Yeah, so, so yeah. even people that we knew that they weren't gonna come, like we still sent them like an invite anyway, and they were very appreciative of it. Yeah. And then once we got back the so we sent out the save the dates uh, to everybody, mm-hmm. 
Uh, and then once we got back the responses, we were at about 180. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, we that, were at about 180. I agree with that number. But then as time, you know, goes on, people can't make the payments for the rooms and all that good stuff. And we ended up at 127. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Okay. 127. Okay. 180 people. So you didn't even really have to cut because you were able to squeak those one, like squeak the 127 into the castle, right? Well, <laughs> that was like a whole other thing. <laughs> Not really. Because the decor that I wanted, I wanted the long tables and I would not budge same here. on okay, that. Same. Like I wanted, I wanted the long I table. Still understand it. And That's that. Cool. They're gorgeous. The view, like the. Oh, no, visually, but at the time I'm like, God. And that seating, Don't let me plan that. But. That seating <laughs> configuration only sat 90. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So the Patsu, they have like a upper balcony thing. So the other 30 or 40 people, we put them up there. <laughs> yes, it was. But here's the thing, though. So the strategy was that. Were they like the special people that were going up there? It or the people the younger so, so we put oh, OK. Are the, uh, the party goers? We got about at least like at least 30 of younger friends that just like to party. And I know if they was all by themselves, we put an open bar up there. They good. And if you lit up there, right? Mm. And so that, for the most part, we had a couple of complaints, but for the most part, <laughs> it was good. The problem was that it rained in the morning going it into the ceremony. It rained from the night before. So we had to put to... tents over the main, the lower level. So now we had to bring in TVs, correct? Yeah. And yeah. a kid, <laughs> and, and video. So now like, people do, can't like, a see live us. Stream, a so. live stream, so they can't see us. But they like eating their food, looking at the TV. So that didn't go away. <laughs> it didn't go away. <laughs> well, it was, for, for, it was only a handful of people that it didn't go well with because they were like now cut off from the rest of. The... They're like, we're not in the wedding. We're not. We're no yeah. longer a part of the right. reception. Right. Exactly. But in our defense, we put grandmas, the aunties, the older folks that we love, so they ain't got to go up the steps. You know what I mean? So we put yeah. everybody on. Yeah, because it was still. It still a hike you know so that's what when we were when it was coming down to it had it not rained it would have been fine because they were would have just been on the upper level and they could over they could see everything but it was the tents. A crazy downpour so we had like this big 60 by 80 tent over us and it blocked like the the view of the top and then it was hot up there like it was a lot. Cause I remember even trying raining. to, yeah. yeah, trying to rush through dinner because I felt really, really bad. I was like, look, we just got to hurry up and just hurry up and get to the dance floor. So um, everybody can come down. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so everybody can come down and kind of party. Like, that was like, I, I, I don't know. And then at that point, even I'm sitting thinking, like, what could I have done differently? Like, just this not invite good. them. Yeah. Not extra people. So there, No, that know, group was going to come no matter what. So right. we didn't have a choice. We didn't. Either. We didn't have. Yeah, we Somebody didn't. Somebody was going to be upset either way. The only thing what could have happened, and I saw this after the fact, was so there's an infinity pool. I don't know if you ever look at the venue, but there's an infinity mm -hmm. pool. It's gorgeous. I could have probably oh, yeah. built out with like a plexi thing and built that out and tented that. Right on that. top of that. Ah, uh, yeah. And it would have still been a part of it but on the on the ground floor yeah. but i didn't think of it until i'm actually there sitting in the space like you're like oh that's a perfect that's spot a perfect right there right i could have <laughs> put a right dance there. floor thing over that yeah. tend to that and then but because you also built the dance floor <laughs> at pack two did oh you did we didn't get there we didn't, we'll get, get there. We didn't build a dance floor no no you had somebody build a dance the floor. dj did the dj put one down is that what bill I thought we had ended up not getting a dance floor because it was too expensive. They built it. You was you was there to build the dance right. floor. Yes. Let me look um, at your pictures. Hold on now. You, you don't remember? Look, like, see, he said after all of this, they built the dance floor. Did we end up getting a checkered dance yes, floor? Yes, and then they took it out, and the next day, and maybe we was on a boat, and we drove by Pat Two, and everybody mm -hmm. was like, "Oh my God, they cleaned it. Everything's gone." I don't remember getting the checkered yes, dance floor. They built it. <laughs> I think you're confusing. I think we ended up not getting that because we it was had too a dance expensive. floor. We had a, we literally had a checkered dance floor. There's another wedding that had a checkered dance floor that was a reference. I don't think we ever got the checkered dance floor. I'm not crazy. 
You think about the checkered dance floor from your Are we talking about party. You don't see the checkered dance floor right under here? Under us? Yeah. I feel like I'm trying to see it. I don't know if you can see it from here, but I see it's black and white. We did it. I did I was there. I was there. <laughs> I didn't remember about that. I was there. You were such in the zone, you don't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't This, was, this like... was like the day before we had the rehearsal. You had some guys come and build the dance floor out. I didn't remember. I thought I thought we got rid of that because the budget. No, we got it done. Because <laughs> at that point it was like, just do it. We've already we're already in it, so we you may as well just keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh, I didn't remember about yeah. that. I thought we didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, that was the that. day that we had to decide on the tents. Um, or having the having the tents. Oh, the out. tents did come. They erected the tents because we knew it was we. Well, I knew it was gonna rain a month before because <laughs> I checked the farmer's almanac. <laughs> <laughs> so I already knew. I haven't heard Farmer's Almanac in a very long time, just so you know. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't. Yes. Check the Farmer's Almanac if you want to know if it's going to rain on your wedding day. So I already knew that it was going to rain. Not even a month. I knew. Like, because you know, you get it in like a year. Like, I knew it was going to rain. But I was like having like this glimmer of hope that like it wouldn't. And the night before, I'm sitting there in this big old castle by myself and the rain is just thundering it's just coming down it's just coming down and i'm just like oh my gosh just please just let it go tonight the next day when we had no or the earlier that day is when we had the wedding rehearsal sorry i'm all over the place but earlier that day we had the wedding rehearsal and the guys came and they put up the tents but that's the w- one decision that you made yeah it probably <laughs> is actually the one decision that you made and you were like no nah, that looks uh, stupid he <laughs> said oh that looks stupid it looks it's terrible stupid. And because it was, it blocked everything. Like it blocked the castle, blocked everything. And you were like, "Well, mm, we get yeah. wet, everybody, everybody gonna get wet." Yeah. So they had to take the tents away, which we still had to pay for. And I was like, another thing too. I tried to, I was like, "Please." They were like, "Nope, it already came off the truck." Yeah. So <laughs> we had to pay for those tents. So you might be right. Maybe that's the same crew that brought the checkered it's dance floor. It's the same floor. crew. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, those were the tents and the checkered dance floor and the, and the rain, like it. It rained, it rained, it rained, and I cried, I cried. I cried. I was 18 months come down to this. Yeah. Like, so the picture when I'm like out at the balcony, like with my back turned, like looking out. I love that picture. I am, I am crying. I am looking at this black sky. So you're not crying because of emotion. You're crying, well, it's emotion, but you're not crying a romantic cry. This is a, it's crying, it's raining on my... This is the, this is right. rain. T- <laughs> the sky okay. is black, and the photographer. Oh, shout out to Dwayne! Like he is amazing. He Phenomenal was like, job. he said, don't. He said, don't worry. He said, he's he's he keeps being so encouraging. He's like, see, look at the sky is coming. And it wasn't. <laughs> he still tries. Oh, look, it's getting blue. It's gonna pass. This is like three o'clock, I think. Yeah. The weather's supposed to start at four, and I just hear the thunder, the rain. It's just so. Uh, it is nasty. And they had to hold the guests on the bus until the rain. We just had to wait it had out. To slow and, it down. Um, and Cara, like she was also, she was just so encouraged. Like, don't worry, we party in rain, sun. And I'm like, no. It's rain. Was that? I think Cara decided to give the guests the run punch. Yes. So everything. we had, mm. so we had all the guests on the bus. Like she left them raining. on there because it was raining. So she like made a party for them. But I also later found out that it wasn't only because of the rain. The generator stopped working. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. didn't know that on your wedding day, though. You found that I out know. after uh, the fact. I thought, Good. We were holding, I thought we were holding for the rain, and it kept getting later and later. Because we were ready. Like, I was ready on time, and I'm like, Car, I said, what is happening? I said, I'm walking. And then, so Car, she's she's on her um her, her radio. She's like, my bride is walking. Guys, what's happening? We got to do this. We got to do this. But the entire time, they were trying to troubleshoot the generator that's so a, the music right could there. work. And yes. I don't know what they that's did, the but if you look at our photos now, it's dark. When we're walking out with the confetti, it wasn't mm-hmm. a nighttime wedding. 
<laughs> the sun did start to set because of the but rain or whatever, but it wasn't that dark. But it was dark because, because of the lighting. Of the working and i remember walking out like hearing the guests say oh it's so dark i can't see anything but i just figured like somebody didn't turn on the up lighting yet or something like that like i didn't know what was going on at that yeah. time we were married i was like all right you're in your zone now this is happening so yeah we were yeah taking family photos and because i wanted the sunset the same sunset that we went all the way to the grill for that we not we can't get yeah. because it's now like five thirty, almost six o'clock, waiting on the rain, and now we know the generator. <laughs> so <laughs> the guests were having cocktail hour in the dark because they they were running cable and trying to get power any way they could <laughs> because of the cocktail hour. So the cocktail hour never got lit. That's a fact. Yeah, they the was in the dark. Yeah, they were in the dark. The cocktail hour never got lit. Like the up lighting for the trees and all of that never happened. Um, because we had to have to run the whatever power was available, whatever house power thing was available for the music and all the mm. other stuff. So yeah, it was Yeah, I didn't know though. So I by, found yeah, all that out after the fact. Really yeah, by dinner by it was dinner ready, ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Where did your guests stay? Azul. Azul. Resort. The Azul okay. Resort. Okay. We booked, we booked the whole thing, did we not? But most of it. I guess. Yeah, we have. Yeah, most of it booked yeah. out. Everybody so, stayed there. Yeah, everybody stayed at at Azul. Okay. Um. And had you guys been there before? How'd you guys choose that spot? Do you remember? We toured it. We toured it. Like I, we looked online at like nice yeah. hotels, and that was just like the best one. It was new at the time, and it was, it was yeah, it was all inclusive, and I mean everybody had like their own body. It was just a nice hotel. So we went there. We looked at everything. I. We never considered having the wedding at the hotel. Like, I for sure know I didn't want a hotel wedding. Mm -hmm. But because we had so many guests, we still had, like, you know, the concessions and stuff. So we had our welcome party um, yeah. there. We like, had an all-white yeah, welcome, all welcome party. We had an all-white welcome party at the terrace that they have. Yeah, that um, was good. So, yeah, yeah, that was a good night. That was the night before. Was the night before the wedding? No, the night. Two nights yeah. before. Oh, yeah. That was the night everybody got yeah, there. Yeah, that was the night everybody yeah, got yeah. there. We did an all-white welcome party. Okay. All right. All right. And Marty, did you stay there too? Because you weren't I, at the castle. No, I stayed at the resort. So we okay. had the honeymoon suite, suite or whatever. So I stayed there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then after the wedding, did you guys go back there? Like, did you guys end up extend? Did you do a honeymoon or anything? Or did you, like, how long did you stay? Do you remember? <laughs> so after the wedding, um, we could have stayed at the castle, but we didn't. We, um, we went back. We went back to the resort. We went back to the resort because everybody, everybody was there. So we mm -hmm. just packed up everything, yeah. um, left car, and then they stayed and like cleaned up. And we stayed like, well, remember the wedding was on a Thursday, right? So everybody still had booked their trip till Sunday, anyways. Ooh. So Saturday we had Friday we let everybody rest. Saturday we did like a the brunch. We did the um, yacht. We, we did the yacht thing at some point. With yeah, I think we did that. Was it Friday night or Saturday night? I don't remember. But we did the send off brunch, but we also did a catamaran. But that wasn't with everybody. That was kind of like everybody kind of organized their own thing. And they're like, oh, Melissa and Marty, what are y'all doing? Yeah. They, it was like this catamaran trip that we did. I almost died. That was fun. It was fun. It was a good time. We almost died. You almost died. Was it a storm? Yes. It was a storm, and the guy didn't know where he was going. It was going. a storm, and, and the guy didn't stop. know where he was going, and we were so yeah. wasted, and we didn't care. We were dancing, <laughs> we were partying. And you married. And married, married. Yeah. and <laughs> we, yeah, it was, yeah, we could have died. Wow. Yeah, we're still here. So. Yes, yeah, definitely still yes, you are. Here. Look at you. Yeah, yeah and y'all coming up on two years, so, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you guys do legally in Jamaica or did you guys do the paperwork at home and then did the ceremony? <laughs> do you guys talk about that? Some people don't talk about that. So. No, we just talk about it. We don't honestly, we don't even know if we're married. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so <laughs> you tell this story. You tell this story. Uh, apparently, let me start off by saying apparently. Apparently. So, so the marriage license went to the best man. He was my best friend since I was seven years old. A very unique character, but an <laughs> awesome guy. He's, he's, he's one of the best guys you ever meet. He had it in his jacket. Somebody took his jacket the <laughs> night of the wedding, thinking it was theirs, we assume. We don't know who has the jacket. 
No one ever so, said, hey, I got someone, I got nobody. the wrong jacket. Candice's husband, he went home without his jacket, too. Yeah, so, so he went home with somebody else's jacket. Trisha got that jacket. So we checked the pockets. So the bear's search license was not in there. But we, we don't know what happened we don't know. to it. Then we ordered <laughs> another license, and we got the license. No, but that was just the one you signed on the day. Then, yeah. you know, they send you the official one in the mail. So the officiant... Said that he sent it in the mail. I never got it. It came. And no, that was the first one. And then I reordered another one. Oh, yeah. So was so this in, was this coming from Jamaica? Like, did you guys do it? Yeah, this coming is... from Jamaica. Yeah, we did okay. everything in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, we did everything in Jamaica. So we reordered one. That's three. It's three. It came, but we still don't, we don't know, know where it is. Where it is. And, I, and we had it. In our hand. So you and have seen know. it. You guys have seen yeah, it. I've it does it. exist. No, I think it might be at a mother house. It might be at my mom's house uh, somewhere. So we, we we've seen it. We are married. Though. We are. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, allegedly. It's just a joke. Apparently, like, I don't know. I like, don't have the proof. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Y'all are funny for that. Yes. Okay. Hey, things happen. That means y'all was partying it up. I, I've seen a couple yeah. photos. I can't wait. I'm going to get the rest of them. But y'all clearly had a great time. It was a good time. Yeah, we did. We time. had an amazing time. <laughs> did you automatically know that you guys were going to do Destination? Yes. Yeah. Both? Well, I, I don't know if he knew. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know Jamaica is her favorite place. And I took a liking to it when I finally got to Jamaica and really see the country. Mm. And so I wanted to go there, too. Um, and I, I think locally it just, it was nowhere that we really could feel like, like we love Philly, but it's not really that, like, I don't know if we could find, what can we ever, I don't think we could, could ever I mean, we could have, we could have found venues here. It would, it would have been a lot more expensive for sure. I think it would have been like 15 to 20% more expensive. And it just wouldn't have been popping. Like, it wouldn't have been, like, we literally took 100-plus people yeah. out of people that didn't even that have was, passports. And that was my thing. Like, people a lot that of my, never even yeah. owned a passport. That's the best passport. part. That's the best yeah. part of yeah, it. My family never really left, never traveled like that. And mm-hmm. so it gave them a reason. Like, they had to, like, go get a passport. So to Melissa's point, like, we had to force family members, grown, grown folks, to, like, go get a passport so you come to my wedding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so mm-hmm. that was the dope part about it. And like you said, we got married on a Thursday, so we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday. People had a chance yeah. to really enjoy the country, you know, and come for a good reason. So I think that was good. Yeah. Yeah. That that does that is one of the favorite parts. I love hearing how everybody talks about that. And that's that's across all races really, but it's really great to just hear about how your friends and your family who just have never done this they might be initially looking at you crazy like huh like you oh really what what i gotta do Uh, uh uh-huh but then they do it and they get excited like we were getting like the messages like got our passports with pictures and then you know they're flying and first time being on a plane like all of those things is just beautiful and then they continue to travel like that's the other thing like we you guys opened up your family to something that i'm sure they had no idea what you guys were giving them so yeah gave them a little travel bug and the fact like like it was really impactful like they still talk about the wedding yeah like like they are still talking about it like it's the best time we ever had and that's all we wanted really was just you know for them to just experience something dope so I love it. Did you get any pushback? Like, was anybody like, this is terrible? I can't believe you're doing this? Anything like that? You don't have to name the names, but did anybody do it? No. Not really? Uh-uh. No, because my family is Jamaican. Um, yeah. So, like, my, my parents are born in Jamaica. My whole family is Jamaican. I'm first generation born in the States. Um, so they were excited. Like, even my, my grandmother, who has not been back to Jamaica probably for, like, 20 plus or not yeah. more years her and her sisters she came sister. yeah. she still talks about it she's like oh i should be yeah. at azul going to my what's it going out to have my breakfast so yeah no we didn't get any no we didn't get any pushback at all i love it yeah. i love it um I'm really excited oh so you're coming up on two years what advice can you offer the Dusty Brides who are not married yet and they're planning their destination wedding? 
I want one from each of you too, just by the way. So just okay. so you know, my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the advice that I would give is just go for it. Anything that you would want if you were getting married locally, don't limit yourself. It definitely is possible to have yeah. your dream wedding at a destination. A lot of people, a lot of brides sometimes think that their resources are going to be limited or, you know, I can't have certain things. You can have everything. We didn't get to talk about how we got our decor there. Oh, no, we're going to talk about that. That's okay. we're going to. Yeah. yeah, I need that. We need that. So, yeah. Yeah, you need that. <laughs> yeah, you need that. Yeah. So I, I would that. say, like, do not let, you know, anything limit you. If it's financial, you know, I get it. But everything you want, try everything in your power to make it happen because it is possible and it'll all be worth it. Aww. Mari? Uh, um, advice, I would say, you know, it's, it's a, it can be emotional, up and down, frustrating, but the day that it happens, it's going to be all worth it. Because I'm telling you, I thought she was losing her mind at one point. Like, this is insane. And we'll talk about the the, the shipping stuff to Jamaica story. But even in that, I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. And then when I seen it, and just how everybody was just vibe Came like, together. Came together, and I was like, it makes sense. And I told her, I said, I get it. It makes sense. Like, it was, it was worth every bit of stress. You're going to go through every emotion, frustrated, happy, smiling, crying you know, and everything, but it's it's worth whatever you put into it. You won't get right back. So that would be my, my advice to just just do it. That's just do it. It's, just it's, it's your one day. Just do it. You don't have um, no regrets. Because I don't think I don't think I have any regrets from anything that we did for that day. It was just dope. It was dope. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Little stressful though. Just a little bit. <laughs> he doesn't handle stress well, so. No, not at all. He's a good though. Oh, what are your signs? I'm a Sagittarius. And okay. I'm a Scorpio. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, Scorpio, okay, yeah. All right, I get it, yeah. <laughs> yep, Makes you know sense, it. got it. <laughs> oh, that's 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 beautiful. I love that. Um, So two more, I'm, I'm about to say two more questions, but I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up, but I do want to touch on a couple of things. So we have to talk about your decor and then also you guys had a i mean how long was your engagement you said 18 months yeah 18 months yeah did, did you guys like have to like save up through that or did you guys pay for that yourselves how did you guys do that <laughs> don't miss part two 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 don't miss part two, don't miss part two.